Hey friends, it's Don, and today we're going to talk about the top 10 most common interview mistakes that will literally keep you from landing the job you want. Now, I want you to succeed on your next interview, so grab a notebook and let's get started. But before we do, if at the end of the video you found this to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up, I'd appreciate it, and subscribe. All right, so let's move in here to number one, top 10 interview mistake, dressing inappropriately. It is so critical that you dress professionally for a job interview and just do some research on the company culture and dress accordingly. When in doubt, it's better to be overdressed than underdressed. Now, there have been a couple of times where I went on an interview and I was wearing a suit and well, they weren't. And <laughs> they were actually just wearing uh, golf shirts and I made them feel uncomfortable. So, Find out how they dress and then dress like they do, but maybe just a little bit better. They're probably, every single interview I've ever been on, I don't think I've went on any where I wasn't wearing at least a shirt and a tie. So you can show up in a suit, you know, maybe in, you know, in your car or something like that, and then, you know, ditch the jacket if you want. Now, if it's a virtual interview, still, um, I, I probably would not wear a suit jacket in a virtual interview. Definitely, um, I'd wear a shirt and a tie, depending on who they are. If it's Apple or Google or you know, Facebook, maybe not. Uh, but if it's somebody like IBM or it's an accounting firm or it's a bank, or something like that, then I'd definitely be wearing a tie on a virtual interview. Okay, let's move on here to number two, poor hygiene. Don't forget the basics, just like, you know, brushing your teeth, showering, using deodorant. I mean, that stuff goes without saying, but some people just stink. So make sure that, you know, your hair's neat, your nails look good, and this good hygiene shows that you are taking the interview seriously, and you really don't want them to be kind of wondering what stinks in the room. Now, if it's a virtual interview and you stink, nah, who cares? All right, let's move on here to number three, failing to make eye contact. I mean, this can be hard for some people because they're just naturally shy where they just want to look away or they feel intimidated, but maintaining eye contact shows confidence in the conversation. And what you want to do is just practice making eye contact with family and friends before the interview. And this should kind of get you in the habit. I mean, naturally as humans, we want to look in each other's faces. That, that's just how we communicate because we don't just, we don't just um, hear what people are saying. We want to see the expressions on their face as they are saying them. And that's, whole, that's part of the communication process. So if you're not making eye contact, that means your interviewer can't see what's on your face, or at least they can't see what's on your eyes. I mean, unless you're just totally looking away, they won't be able to see your face. But, you know, make that contact and that builds a rapport, that builds a bond with your interviewer and it just makes them feel like, you know, you're totally engaged in the conversation. Okay, let's move on here to the next one. Number four, poor body language. So what you wanna do is you wanna sit up straight in your chair, like me. I mean, I don't think you ever see me kind of hunching over or sitting back. I'm always sitting up straight. Back is straight because I am connecting with you and I want you to take me seriously. If I were slouched in my chair and trying to give you advice, how well do you think that would come across? You'd probably be like, that Don guy doesn't know what he's talking about. But I maintain good body language all throughout uh, these videos so that I can communicate and emphasize my point to you. And, this, and another thing, in, in addition to body language, don't fidget. Or if you have long hair, don't be, I don't have any hair, but <laughs> don't be twirling your hair, you know, and be mindful of your hand gestures and just that good body language really leaves a lasting impression. It really does. Next one, number five, arriving late. So many people today, I don't know why, um, everybody has a smartphone, they know what time it is, but people arrive late and it's really frustrating. And this, what you wanna do is you wanna get in early so that you have time to settle in, you gather thoughts, and you can make a great first impression. And, and everybody seems to think that, you know, hey, I can be a little bit late here, I can kind of round the corners over there. No, you can't. Not in a job interview, you shouldn't. You really shouldn't be late anyway. I don't like to be late for anything in my life. I am, a me I am prompt with everything. If I tell you I'm gonna call you the next day, I will call you the next day. If I tell you I'm gonna email you, I will, I will email you. Whatever it is, I will do it. So maintain that and uh, don't be late. All right, let's move on here to number six. Most people who interview for jobs, they don't research the company. And that's why this shows up here on the top 10 list of things not 
to do in an interview. So what you want to do is do your homework, research the company mission, their values and recent news. And what you can do, if you can't find their mission statement, just Google, you know, mission statement for, you know, Citibank or, you know, Charles Robert or whatever, whatever place you're interviewing at, just Google their name and then mission statement and it should come up and then you can find out what's important to them, what they value. And when you understand what they value, this is going to, sh uh, and, you, and then you can reflect that in the interview, and this is going to show them that you're genuinely interested in the opportunity because you looked up, you looked them up, and you found out, you know, where they're headed, why they're going in that direction, who they're trying to serve. Okay, let's move on here to number seven, talking too much or too little. You want to have a balance between sharing your experiences and listening to the interviewer. You want to be concise but you don't want to be afraid to elaborate when needed. Now, one of the things when I do coaching with clients, um, so many people come to me and they're like, Don, I just talk too much in the interview. And, and some pe people, at least some people are aware that they do this. And what happens when you're in the interview and you're just talking too much, you're overwhelming your interviewer with information and they can't, they can't comprehend all that. They can't digest all of that information. And when you start talking too much, you're dominating the conversation. And then it's not a conversation anymore. It's you preaching at them or it's you complaining or it's you, you know, just overwhelming them with so much detail that they didn't ask for. So for some people you have they have they have to consciously be aware to dial it down a notch or two some people three um other people they they don't talk enough now that's I think it's harder for people who don't talk enough to talk more than it is for people who talk a lot to talk less so if you're if you don't if you're not the person the kind of person that talks a lot it, it's going to be harder for you. I think it just depends on your personality. It can be a little bit harder for you to, um, to expand on what you're saying, but if you're conscious of it and you really know what you're talking about, you should be able to add a little bit more to the conversation. And you got to remember, um, in a job interview, ideally, the balance is you should be talking 70 to 80% of the time, whereas the interviewer should be talking the other 20 or 30%. So keep that in mind on your next job interview. All right, let's move on here to number eight, speaking negatively about previous employers. This should actually be the number one uh, top 10 interview mistake that people make. So many people go into a job interview and consider it a bitch session and they like to complain. They like to complain about their last job, their, la their last manager, um, what they didn't like about them. And what happens is when, when you share all those negative attributes in an interview, your interviewer is going to think, well, you know, if we hire this Don guy, he's going to do the same thing if we, if we hired him here. Now, here's the thing. I get yelled at a lot for this because I tell people not to speak negatively, but they're like, Don, well, they asked me, you know, what I didn't like about my previous employer. So I just told them truthfully what I didn't like, that they were, you know, just the scum of the earth. You know, I'm, I'm not never telling you to lie in a job interview, but you need to put the filters on. You really do. If you, if they ask you what, you know, what you didn't like about your, your, pe your previous employer, put the filters on and give them, give them a cleaned up version of what you didn't like. It's not a bitch session. It's not a time for you to vent. Um, even, I mean, even if you were treated poorly there and now people are going to be like, Don, what do you mean? I was pretty, I was treated poorly in my job. They were mean to me. They beat me down and I am going to tell the pre the prospective employer that and if when if you if you take that path I and mean, it's true and you want to say all these things it maybe it makes you feel better better inside to to get that out but you're not doing yourself any favors in the interview so if you want to share some negative sides of what happened to you put the filters on give them the cleaned up version don't prattle on just just give it to them uh, in little bite sizes but I urge you not to do it at all. I mean, just if you think back to the uh, the rules that you learned when you were a kid, um, never say anything bad about anybody, even if they were bad to you. That's that's just one of the, the good human rules of nature or one of those rules of 12 things I learned as a kid or something like that. Don't say anything bad about people, even if they were bad, even if they were mean to you. Um, I, I don't. There, there's a lot of people that have done, you know, not nice things to me, uh, 
I don't say anything bad about them. It's just, I think it does more harm to me than, than it does to them. Because it, it doesn't serve anybody if I, if I trash talk somebody else. It's, it, it, it only serves me and it actually, it lowers me, I, I think on the, lowers me a few notches in somebody's uh, eyes. So that's just my take on that. All right, let's move on. Enough of that, I'm talking too much. <laughs> let's move on to number nine, not asking questions. So many people go into a job interview and when the interviewer says, hey, Don, do you have any questions for us? Uh, no. <laughs> what that immediately says is, I'm not interested in this job. That's all it says. So you wanna prepare some thoughtful questions to show that you are interested in the job. And if you don't have any questions about the job, then you're probably not interested in it. And, and that's okay too. But if you are interested in it, get some questions. To help you with that, uh, this little book here, this probably has about 13 questions in it that you can ask your interviewer. Um, this is Top 10 Guide. It's got, uh, and you can get this from jobinterviewtools.com slash top 10. I'll put a link in the description for you. Um, all right, let's move on here. Um, now, again, with not asking questions, you see, when you ask the questions in the interview, this helps them understand if this role is a good fit for you. And that's really the whole purpose of the interview is to decide whether you're a good fit for them and they're, and, you know, they're a good fit for you. And that can only happen through an exchange of questions. All right, last one here, number 10, failing to send a thank you note. So many people do not send a thank you note and so many people wonder why they never hear back. Some people think that, you know, it's too pushy, it's too forward, I don't need to do that. I know, I know for different cultures, different countries, uh, Great Britain, um, they, they definitely have a culture of not sending thank you notes, but I, I told, I had some of my clients from Great Britain and I said, Hey, send a thank you note. And they're like, Oh no, we can't do that. You know, we're, we're way too proper for that. That's, that's way too pushy. I'm like, just do it. Just try it. And you know, they sent a thank you note and boom, I got an email back saying, Hey Don, I tried that stupid thank you note thing and I got the job. So it works everywhere because I mean, saying, expressing gratitude at the end of an interview just shows them you know, that you're interested in them, that you like them, and that you're, it shows your professionalism and your appreciation for the opportunity for them to sit down with you. So at the end of your next interview, just send a thank you note, with, usually within 24 hours. Um, you can even do it, I, I, the way I did it, is I already had that thank you note queued up. It was ready to go. Um, all I had to do was go home and just change a few things on my computer and hit send and it was ready to go. I didn't have to think about it. So it, it, it's a good thing to do. I actually have a, I have a guide, uh, a, a template for you on how to write a thank you note. I'll put a link for that in the description as well. And there you have it, my friend. Those are the top 10 interview mistakes that keep people from landing the job. Now remember, the key to acing your interview is preparation, communication, and professionalism. So keep these tips in mind and you are going to be well on your way to landing your dream job. And hopefully many of these mistakes were a review for you, but you know what? Reviewing things that you already know is the best way to reinforce them and make them a part of your subconscious. So remember, repetition is the mother of skill. You just can't do something once or read something one time and be good at it. It takes practice, practice, practice. All right, my friend, that's all I have for you. To help, to help you go a little bit farther, um, actually, I have this interview checklist here. And you can download this for free from javanavitools.com slash checklist. And this has a lot of things that you should be doing to prepare for your interview. It's got um, you know, how to do some job search tips, resume writing tips, preparation for phone interviews, um, prepare for competency interviews, and a whole sidebar here of additional tips. And on the back, it has more tactics and strategies about interview fundamentals, um, avoiding interview anxiety, things never to do. It actually has the top 10 mistakes on here. But you know what? These top 10 mistakes are different than the top 10 mistakes that I covered with you today. I guess there's really 20 top 10 mistakes, but I really only, only wanna make it sound like there's 10 because I don't wanna overwhelm you with too many mistakes. You'll just freak out for your interview. So uh, you could get this checklist from jobbertybootstools.com slash checklist. Put in your name, email address. I will send this out to you right now. And this has links to other videos on my channel that are going to give you further insight on you know, different areas of interviewing. 
All right, my friend, that is all I have for you today. Were you expecting more? All right, good luck on your interview, and we'll see you in the next video. And make sure that if you like this video, you hit that like button and you subscribe. Thanks again. We'll see you. Bye-bye.